brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most famous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them those who are blind and those who are lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among men is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Teacher, let me see. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately the man regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us are probably familiar with the phrase, there are none so blind as those who will not see. And certainly that applies very much to today's Gospel. Because in today's Gospel, St. Mark is not just recounting a historical event. He's not just giving us a blow-by-blow blow of a, a miracle that Jesus worked. Instead, he's contrasting the blindness of Bartimaeus, which realizes its blindness and wants to be healed, and the blindness of the disciples and the crowd, that in some cases doesn't even know that it's blind and doesn't necessarily seek healing. 
St. Mark begins by telling us that Jesus and his disciples and a crowd were leaving Jericho. Why were they leaving Jericho? Well, if we've been paying attention to the Gospel of St. Mark as we've been reading it for the last number of weeks, we know that Jesus is on his final journey to Jerusalem. A few weeks ago, St. Mark said that Jesus set his face resolutely towards Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem the very last time to undergo his passion and death, his salvific ministry, to undergo his ministry as Messiah. And that Messiah was going to be accomplished, the, the saving works, by being handed over to evil men, by being scourged and spat upon, and finally being crucified. And sitting by the side of the road was this Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, probably sitting by the side of the road outside the gate of Jericho because it was a very good place to get money. He'd be able to beg and all kinds of people would be passing by back and forth, good place for him. And as he hears that it's Jesus of Nazareth, he begins to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Though blind, physically blind, Bartimaeus instinctually knows that this Jesus is not just Jesus the itinerant preacher. He's not just Jesus the carpenter from Galilee. Rather, he calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He knows that there is much more than physical blindness going on, that he is in need of mercy from the only one who can give it to him. And then St. Mark tells us that the disciples and many in the crowd sternly ordered him to be quiet. Now, why would they do such a thing? Well, perhaps Bartimaeus was a bit of a nuisance. You know, perhaps he sat there and shouted out all the time and they just wanted him to be quiet. Perhaps there were some of them who thought that this one just wasn't worth Jesus' time. Not, not quite the right class of people to be calling out for Jesus don't disturb him, Jesus has more important things to do than you. However, many great theologians, many of the fathers of the church among them, posit that the real reason that they told Bartimaeus to be quiet was because of what it was he was shouting out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David is a messianic title. Any first century Jew would have known that for someone to be referred to as son of David meant that you were calling this person the Messiah. Bartimaeus was saying beforehand what was going to be shouted in the streets of Jerusalem in a very short while, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, many of the disciples and many in the crowd, most in the crowd probably, were very comfortable with a Jesus who was a moral teacher, with a Jesus who was an upright man. They were even comfortable with a Jesus who was a healer and a wonder worker, but not quite so comfortable with a Jesus who is a Messiah. Because by this time, they already know that he's not the political Messiah that many in Israel were expecting. And there was only one other option. If he's not some great prince that's going to cast off the foreign yoke of Rome, then he must be the Messiah spoken of in the prophecies of Isaiah. The Messiah who would suffer and die. That is a very uncomfortable Jesus to follow. And so, as is pointed out many times, they simply either willfully or unwillfully got it wrong and wanted to follow a somewhat more comfortable Jesus to the point where they even tell him, after he predicts his own passion, that this must never happen to him. You know, no sooner does he tell them about the passion than they want to change the topic and talk about which of them is the greatest. They're blinded by their own misconceptions of who and what a Messiah ought to be. Not so, Bartimaeus. 
he keeps on shouting. And Jesus says to him, call him here. Now, Mark points out any number of times how the disciples, the apostles among them, just don't quite get it. But they have been around long enough to learn that when Jesus says something, they better do it. And so they call. They say, take heart, get up, he's calling you. Well, they didn't need to tell Bartimaeus to take heart. He already had. It was because he had taken heart that he was calling out, son of David, have mercy on me. And then St. Mark says that he got up and he threw off his cloak and came to Jesus. Now again, the throwing off of the cloak is not just St. Mark describing a physical action, that he was wearing a cloak and he tossed it aside. No, Mark is talking about throwing off a much different cloak. But to truly come to Jesus and allow him to work his wonders in our lives, we need to throw off the cloak of ignorance, the cloak of willful blindness. We need to throw off the cloak of selfishness and of greed and of sinfulness and of self-interest. We need, in essence, to throw off the cloak of the self so that we can be filled with the Lord. This is what Bartimaeus does. And then Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? Now, even if Jesus weren't God, it would seem rather obvious that when a blind man comes to a healer, he wants to be healed, he wants to be able to see. But Jesus, once again, as he often does, wants to invoke something in his disciples. He wants them to hear the answer. Teacher, says Bartimaeus, let me see. Let me see. Jesus desired that his disciples, that the crowd of his day and his disciples and the crowd through each and every succeeding generation down to us learn that very same lesson. That we realize our own blindness, cast off the self and come to him saying, let me see. Let me see who you truly are. Do not allow me anymore to be blinded by my own misconceptions of who you are or who you ought to be. No longer allow me to be blinded by seeing the Jesus that I have made for myself who fits comfortably into my life and into the morals or the lack thereof of the world in which I live. No longer let me be blinded by looking for a Messiah, a Savior, a Lord and God who makes no demands on me. But rather let me cast off the cloak of that willful blindness and come to see the Jesus who truly is. Jesus heals Bartimaeus and he says to him, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. But Bartimaeus, being cured of his blindness and able to see, knows that he can't go on his way anymore. There is only one way. So St. Mark tells us that he followed Jesus on the way. And what way is that? The authentic way of a disciple following the Master. That authentic way which inevitably leads to the cross. There is no shortcut to the resurrection. There's no detour that we can take around the cross to get to eternal life comfortably. Jesus is absolutely clear so many times, if you would be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. This is the way that Bartimaeus chooses. This is the way that Jesus asks us to choose. No longer to be willingly blind, but to come to him, ask him to let me see, and to see before us the Jesus who goes to the cross, who stretches his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of God's covenant and bids us come to me. May God bless you all.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, let us call upon the name of the Lord, who is always near to those who seek his mercy. The response to the petitions is, Christ, graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. We pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world that she will be blessed with peace and unity as she proclaims the message of God's love for his people. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. We pray for the Christians who are persecuted throughout the world that their brothers and sisters in the faith join in solidarity of faith and prayer with them. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray for all leaders of nations that they will protect the dignity, rights, and freedoms of all people, especially their freedom of religion and of conscience. Christ, hear us. Christ, gracious. We pray for married couples, that they will grow in mutual love and that their commitment to each other may be strengthened each day. We pray especially for God's healing love for any couples who are having difficulties in their marriage. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that Almighty God will bring about an end to the coronavirus pandemic and that he will abundantly bless those who are caring for the sick, the suffering, and the vulnerable at this time. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, especially the chronically ill of our parish, and all those who are suffering because of natural disasters or political unrest, that they may know the healing and comfort of God. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died, especially our deceased parishioners, that they will be brought into the eternal celebration of Christ's victory over death. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. During this month dedicated to Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, let us ask our Blessed Mother, to join her prayers to ours as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be the Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory to his name for our good and his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now, 
possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Douglas our Bishop, Wayne his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, there is a lot going on here this morning. In the South Tower entrance, you will find the Catholic Women's League with the first weekend of the ticket sales for the Christmas draws. You can't miss them, they're very well decorated back there. Uh, not quite so obvious though are the tables with the people for the One Heart, One Soul campaign. If any of you can yet make a pledge or even a one-time donation, those tables can be found just inside the main doors of the church. And then outside, in the parking lot between the church and St. John Bosco School, you'll find the table set up for our first Food and Friendship Weekend, and thank God that he gave us good weather for it. Uh, next weekend, we will have the book for the names of the dead out. As you know, uh, November begins uh, a week Monday, and November is traditionally the month that we dedicate to prayer for the faithful departed. Uh, the book will be on the St. Joseph's altar for you to write in the name of your deceased loved ones. On the Feast of All Saints, November 1st, there will be Mass at 9 o'clock and 7 in the evening. And on November 2nd, the Feast of All Souls, Mass will be offered for the faithful departed at 9 o'clock, 12.15, and 7 in the evening. You're very welcome. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, in peace. Thank